Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to 3302. This is where I take a look at the news and happenings in and around Elite Dangerous. Today I'm going to take a look at the new release of Elite Dangerous Arena, as well as some new details for patch 2.1. Uh, Fronty have a Mayhem event going on, we'll take a quick look at that, as well as some of the new details for Distant Worlds Expedition. The voting for the Toby IX competition is also about to get underway. Last week, in a very unexpected announcement, Frontier released Elite Dangerous Arena. This is a standalone game that can be purchased both from Frontier's store as well as on Steam. It costs £4.99 or $7.49. Now, this is the same game called CQC that all of us with access to Elite Dangerous have had for quite a while now. CQC, or Close Quarters Combat, is a very fast-paced multiplayer space shooter. And to be perfectly honest, it's actually perfectly suited to being a standalone product. It's also nice to see it available for this low price, because it means it's not going to be a pay-to-win title, and that there shouldn't be any microtransactions involved within the game. Of course, if you've got Elite Dangerous already, you've got full access to Elite Dangerous Arena, and both the standalone game and the main game are fully compatible with each other. You can actually interplay and have matches across both games. Now, people have actually asked whether Arena is going to be released on the Xbox, and Frontier won't actually confirm that, but they have said that they do want to release it on further platforms in the future. And although they don't have any announcements for that at the moment, it seems fairly obvious to me that it will be available on Xbox before too much longer. I think Arena also bodes very well for the future of the game as a whole, because obviously it's a small standalone title, very low priced, meaning that pretty much anyone can just jump in and have a go of it, and it's likely that that title could well get, get people interested in the full game. We know that Elite Dangerous is still doing pretty well. It sold over 1.4 million copies at last count and still has a very active player base. But if Frontier want to stretch their legs a little bit and open up the game to other audiences, then I'm all for it. In the latest dev update from Frontier, Michael Brooks continued to talk about the upcoming mission changes for patch 2.1. Now it actually seems to be shaping up to be a very good patch indeed, especially for missions. The latest dev update tells us how missions will have a much greater variety, as well as be much more focused in context. For example, missions given out will be very much more focused upon the state of that particular system. So if it's in a state of war, civil war, or even in a state of collapse, then the missions will reflect that. The missions will also vary depending on what type of government is actually issuing them. So if it's an anarchic government, then you may well get more overt hostile missions, whereas one that's a democracy may be a little bit more black ops. A couple of the changes I particularly like are the changes to unidentified signal sources. Now at the moment that these spawn completely randomly. You can simply fly at the slowest speed when in supercruise and sooner or later a USS will just spawn right in front of you and you can sit there and a whole bunch more of them will appear as well. That's going to change the uh, generation or spawn requirement for them is now based on spatial requirements so they will appear at specific or set of random distances from each other so that there'll be no more just sitting around waiting for them to appear but they would also be a lot more context sensitive so they should be related to the location of space that they're actually discovered in the dev update talks about shipping lanes and things like that another big change is that USS's will interact very differently with missions so that USS's that are mission related will now appear at specific bodies within space and these can be located using the discovery scanner or by simply scanning the nav beacon within a system if one's actually present. What's for me perhaps one of the biggest changes is the drop-in of the rank requirement for missions. So essentially what this will mean is that if you're a new player you could take up an elite mission if you really wanted to. And although such a mission would probably be difficult to impossible to complete, the reward would actually be substantial. Now the rewards for missions are also going to change and that's something that Michael Brooks said he's going to talk about in the dev update this week. So this overhaul for the mission system is something that's been long overdue and I really do hope it shapes up to be as good as what they're saying it's going to be. Still no news on when patch 2.1 is actually going to be released. The only news we do have is that it's going to be released sometime in the spring, which actually gives it a pretty wide window. Frontier's Mayhem event is continuing on a pace with still a good few weeks left of it to go. 
Now this event is focusing on CQC and a whole load of live streamers are participating in it. Many of the big names, a lot of people you've no doubt watched before. And it's certainly making for some entertaining viewing. If you're interested, do check out Frontier's schedule. They've got a lot of different events coming up. And there's a link to that schedule in the video description below. And now Distant Worlds is still continuing on. A whole bunch of commanders have moved past Sagittarius A now and are continuing on toward the other side of the galaxy. Unfortunately, due to the fact that I was on holiday, as well as I fell behind a little bit, I'm no longer able to keep up with the Distant Worlds expedition. And that really is a bit of a shame for me because it's been a wonderful experience. Eremus1, of course, has got some fantastic footage, but there's also another YouTuber who I'll recommend at the end of this video that you go watch. He's got some really good videos, and if you want to know what's going on with the Distant Worlds expedition, they are certainly worth watching. Now, something interesting did come out of the meetup at Sagittarius A. We all know that there are hundreds of players going along on this expedition, but we all also know that it's somewhat hindered by the limitations of the instances at some point. Up until now, it's been widely assumed that uh, both 16 players or 32 players are the limits for the amount of people that can be in a specific instance. But Frontier themselves have said a few times that there are no upper limits for the uh, number of players in the instances. And this was somewhat proven in Sagittarius A when 53 players got together in the same area and the same instance and met up. There's also a whole lot of footage showing how that went down. It was available in the newsletter this week, but I will also link it in the video description. Do go take a look. Entries for the Toby I Eggs competition have come to an end. Now, there were a whole bunch of really great screenshots submitted for the competition. There were two categories for this. One was the Brutal Beauty screenshot and the other was the Crazy screenshot. Both of them had quite a significant amount of entries and you can see those screenshots in the galleries I've linked to in the video description. Now, the next stage of this competition is the voting stage. That's going to go on for just under five days. The voting will close on Friday at 11.59 at GMT. That's Friday the 26th. So what's going to go on now is that you can check out the galleries below for one for each category and you can all take a vote on your favourite screenshots. Once the voting is closed, the top five screenshots from each category will then go into a secondary voting. There will be two secondary votings, one for each category, and the ultimate winners of those two categories will be receiving a Toby IX eye tracker directly from Toby. Now, I thought long and hard about how these votings should take place. Uh, whether it should be under authentication or whether it should be a free-for-all vote. Now both of these come with their pros and cons and it was a very tough decision so ultimately I decided to open it up to a poll. I placed a poll on Twitter and a poll on YouTube. It was a very close call but the ultimate decision was that the vote should be authenticated. This helps put stop to some of these spam votes that might otherwise have gone on. Unfortunately though it means that you will need a Facebook account to do a vote. I know this won't please everyone but unfortunately Unfortunately, it's the only method of authentication available for this particular website. And on the positive side, it does deliver a bit more security for the voting. Now, if you want to vote, do go check out the two galleries linked below. You can vote multiple times, but there's only one vote per entry. So if you see two or three screenshots you do like, do feel free to vote on each of them. The positive side to this is that some people may well want to vote on their own image as well as some other images they see, and this allows you to do just that. So some fantastic entries there, and if for whatever reason you see that your screenshot hasn't been included, do let me know and I'll be sure to add it in for you. Finally then, I want to take a look at a new YouTuber called Shabuka. He's got a relatively new YouTube channel here, but he's been making some absolutely exceptional Distant Worlds videos. You can see a little bit of his footage here in the background, and they're going to be well worth taking a look at. It seems he's got an ongoing series around Distant Worlds, so if you're interested in keeping track of what's going on with that expedition, it's probably a good idea to keep up with Shabuka and take a look at his videos. I know I'm going to be doing just that. So that brings us to the end of this episode of 3302 then. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.